hit again last Friday? I don't know, Jimmy. Sheriff Miller called me five minutes ago. I didn't talk to him. I was between phones. Yeah. By the way, I got my certificate last night. Your what? The certificate. The advanced certificate. I took the test last night. Oh, yeah. The uh, hypnosis. Thing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm licensed to practice now, so to speak, so I figured you should know that in case you figure you might want to use it on one of the killers, maybe. Uh -huh, we'll see. You know, it's a call on us, right? But I'm convinced that we can use this. I mean, it's a department of program, so nothing can go wrong. Go wrong, go wrong, go wrong. Okay, okay, that's very funny what she asked, but... But, but really, I'm telling you, Wes, I'm, I'm good at this. Got my certificate in advanced hypnotic therapy last night. Way to go, guy. Yep. And Wes said that we could use it on the witnesses. Wes said we'll see. Behavioral science, Wes Grayson. Yeah, Wes, uh, I'm sorry I'm late. This is the third time this week, Tony. I'm getting just a little tired of you not making the meetings. Uh, I'm on the Beltway, just passing River Drive. In a standing room only. I'll be there as soon as I can. You're on River Road. Do me a favor. You get off the Beltway and go to the Kennedy Center. Find the music director at the theater. When you're in his office, call me, will you? Why, something up? Could be. Get on it, Tony. You got it, Wes. Acute sexual psychopath operating in East Harbor, Connecticut. He calls himself the White Bone Demon. Writes it in blood on the walls at the crime scene. It's in block letters, so we can't get anything from handwriting. He appears to be in decompensation. Time span shortening, violence quotient increasing. He has an organized crime scene. The victimology is consistent. It's on the B sheet in the file. I think our guy is a Friday night killer. Victims live alone. They're found Monday morning or Tuesday when they don't show up for work. We never get a clean crime scene. And the hat squad up there only works a righteous murder once a year. They never see a serial psychopath. <laughs> Behavioral science, Wes Grayson. Sheriff Miller. Yeah, put him through. Yeah, Sheriff. Mr. Grayson, Sheriff Miller. He killed again. When? Last night. Should I meet you there? We'll be there in an hour. He's hot again. Woman in her late 30s, dead. Lydia Lanigan. Same ammo. Barefoot? Same body type. They found her 10 minutes ago. White bone demon scrawled across the windows. Well, Halloran from our local office is holding the fort. Alan, you're with us. Norma, you're on home plate. All right, let's go. Uh, Skipper, I got time to go to the bathroom. I'll, I'll hold it. I'm fine. I'm okay. I'm okay. Tony. Yeah, Wes. I'm here. What am I doing? You with the music director? The guy who books the singers? He's standing right beside me. What's up, Wes? I want you to ask him to give you a job. Because he's the only guy in the city that hires prima donnas. What? Jimmy, you bring the donuts? No. Uh, damn it, no. I'm sorry. I forgot the donuts. Okay. We have three killings. We have three organized crime scenes. Anne has the preliminary criminal and victimology profile. What? Now, something's 
Since most serial killers attack inside their own racial and ethnic groups, I'm starting with a white Protestant male with an age of 25. It's the median age of sexual psychopaths, according to Vicap. Now, the killer has organized crime scenes, probably indicating he's slightly older, 26 or 7. Victimology is similar, all women living alone. Now, three so far have been murdered that we know of. All have dorsal penetrations in the cervical area, all have one deep incised wound in the bottom of the right foot made by an unknown instrument. The cut appears to be part of a ritual, a fetish of some kind. Now, that's all we have so far, except for this white bone demon sign he leaves on the window in blood. And according to our psychopathic word profile dictionary, it connotes anger, frustration, and punishment. Jimmy, get on the phone, will you? Call a lumber supply company in East Harbor. Tell them I want 60 board feet of pine 2x4s, a dozen 1x12s put in the back of a truck and sent over to East Harbor PD. Tell them we'll pay for it when we get there. Captain, West Grayson, Behavioral Science Unit, West, Justice Department. Rusty Miller, we spoke on the phone. You're what these? Yeah. Your local guy from Justice is already on the scene. Nobody's been in or out, just like you said. Sealed up? <laughs> right as a frog sick. Hey, let me get that for you, man. Here, Ed. Secretary? Nurse. Oh, you're sick? Ann Madison is an RNDSC. A nurse who's a doctor of psychology. In the car behind us, we have Ned Platt, one of the best old-time feds who ever walked. Sort of a throwback. Ed knows more tricks about solving cases than you and I put together. With him is Alan McWhorter. He's a forensic scientist. There's a man who can make a crime scene talk. And the other guy? Jimmy Bello. He forgets the donuts. Hospital close. Absolutely. You never come on a fresh crime scene without hospital gown and slippers. <laughs> what, are you kidding me? We had a case last year. We found a hair, one red hair. Spectral analysis told us that the host body hadn't eaten for a couple of days. And we discovered that the follicle had been washed with a chemical compound we later identified as a rare French shampoo. Good lead, right? Right. So we traced the stores that sold the shampoo and put out 30 feds on the street with a criminal profile, all looking for a thin red hair killer. So did you get him? You bet we did. Who was it? It was my wife. Hair came from my coat. She'd been dieting and using a French shampoo that her sister had sent her for Christmas. That's why we're careful. Good morning, Les. Good morning. Hey, I got a call from one of you guys. Uh, somebody named Tony D'Agostino said he was on his way up here by car. He sounded mad. Good. We're even. All right. We'll start inside and work back. I want a double grid search and draft. Jimmy, you hold the front door. Make sure nobody comes in behind us. Oh, Wes. Ah, come on. You know too many of us in there makes for confusion. Let's do it. White bone demon scrawled vertically on bay window, apparently by hand and in blood. Blood is dried, deep red in color, should be scraped. Removing single fibrous blue hair, apparently fabric thread from the lower left window sill. Micrometer analysis should ID. Does not appear victim has been moved. No indicia of struggle. No broken furniture. Crime scene appears organized. Possible exsanguination. 
Six feet from window. Run a background check. No signs of ligature to feet or ankles. Personal habits, academic and employment history. Severe cutaneous trauma to the right plantar surface. Long axis is perpendicular to the Langer's line. Victim lying on left side, face up, right arm extended, palm up, bent 90 degrees at wrist, no defense means on hands. Severe cervical trauma, possible dural matter near D3, S1, no cyanosis, rigor mortis. No facial marks apparent, large pool of blood, caked and dried at base of incised wound. Condition of hypostasis exists. Five by seven frame. No cranial matter, however there appears to be adipocere or some waxy substance in the cerebral spinal area. No blood stains apparent on furniture. No signs of struggle. Possible laser latent pattern. Allen go over floor with cyclops. Victim's phone number 555-6795. Check phone company for recent calls. Phone caddy opens under letter L. Possible last call to one of the following. Lansky Cleaners, Lee Tree Trimming, Littleman Carl. Victimology column under habits. Victim obsessively neat. Names listed alphabetically, no personal names or number listed on this page, only for vendors and those supplying services listed under L. Find out why. Hi! Here you got the original call on this. Yeah, yeah. Did I do something wrong? Oh, I, I just like to get impressions if I can. Uh, sort of your first take on the thing when you walked in. Couldn't see much through the window, so I opened the front door and walked in. The door was unlocked, right? Yeah. I caught a ripen once about ten years ago. What I did was air the place out. Yeah, me too. I opened a window inside. I had to. Otherwise, I would have woofed my cookies right in the doorway. Well, thanks, son. Uh, you know, I really appreciate your sticking around. No problem. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. I think she was the victim of opportunity. I think the unsub spotted her, followed her home, broke in, and did the deed. Wasn't no victim of opportunity. She was a victim of choice. She knew this guy. Then why'd he climb in the window? He didn't. See the cop over there with the Joe College shoulders? He opened the window to air out the stench. Always too busy. Somebody says, hey, Tony, would you mind running down by forensics and picking up my report? You got a friggin' reason why you can't? Oh, you're great on a crime scene. There's nobody better at feeling the thoughts of these killers than you are. But once you finished your rain dance, you're nothing. So you send me to the Kennedy Center and you pull that BS hey, the music director? Look, I'm serious here. You weren't exactly a cherry pick when I took you. As I remember, you were about to have a promising career guarding the Bureau parking lot. What do you want, Wes? You want me I on my want knees? You, I want you to get on the damn team. Everybody else, including Jimmy Bellow, plays team ball. Jimmy Bellow? Come on with Jimmy Bellow. Hey, he went out on his own, and he learned hypnosis. You, you don't even show up for meetings, and I'm through with it, Tony. Now you want in, you're in. But you better grab your helmet and get in the huddle. I love you when you're tough and bitchy. You know that, Westy. We got two ways we do things around here, Tony. My way and my way. I'm your boss, and you better get hip to it. No more chances. I'll get your pointy little head out of my sight. Go get some dinner. We're gonna go out there in an hour.
are you a demon? Demons scare us, chase us, or is she the demon? Who is she to you? She's here, in her room, her color coordinated blue floral and gray room. Very neat. Coordinated. It's Friday night. It's Friday night. Why does he do this on Friday? Friday, uh, a special day. Uh, a day it all started. Good Friday. Friday the 13th. Lucky Friday. Unlucky Friday. Friday has a reason why. Not now, not after they're dead. It's so wrong. It's so sad. You don't come back here to relive it. you know what I'm not sure talk to me Tony I think he comes back and visits them that's why it's Friday it gives him the weekend I don't know it's, it's just it's just a feeling well we can put that under post defense behavior possibility anything else I agree with Ann. I don't think it was sex. Okay, look. I don't think he's calling himself a demon. He sees himself as persecuted. Maybe she's the demon. He labels her with the sign on the window. That's good. Everything in that house is color coordinated. That means she was probably wearing shoes that matched her dress. I looked in her closet. Unless she has two pair of light blue shoes, I think he put her shoes back in the closet. No semen anywhere is my bed. Who's he killing? His mother. Maybe. He comes back. He apologizes. He tells him why he had to do it. Look. I gotta get out of here. I'm getting a headache. Okay. Go on, get some sleep. Go on. 
Tony, I'll see you in the morning. Wes. The furniture in there is wrong. She was neat. Everything coordinated, except the gray striped sofa against the blue pattern wall. She wouldn't put it there. It goes against the gray wall. Diagram. I talked to Alan. He got some hair fibers out of the air filtering system. He's going through them. We got a control sample from her head. So far, there's one blonde hair that doesn't belong. Alan's starting to work on it. Nothing under her fingernails, but the coroner won't be through till tomorrow. How's the coroner? Is he the village idiot, or does he know his stuff? He seems okay, but I'm going to stick with him through the autopsy. We got the report back on stomach contents. It's all Friday's lunch out of the cafeteria where she works. The wound in the back is from a slightly curved three-inch blade, like a, a linoleum knife. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Wes, sometimes I look at you and I wonder how you hold it together. I can't keep my life in the right column. I haven't been sleeping well. My dreams are getting spooky. I don't know. Maybe I should just get loose from all this for a while. You know, we're all riding around in a, in a car with the windows rolled up. In this business, we catch each other's illnesses. And the worst illness is transference. We're not like these killers, Anne. They are aberrations. Somehow, I feel like I'm paying for all this with pieces of myself. And the more I do, and the less I become, and the more I have to gamble. Does that make any sense? You ever wonder why I keep Jimmy around? This goes no further, okay? Jimmy is so uncomplicated, so decent, so ready to help, so eager to please. I want him around to keep the rest of us from going sour. Because cynics make mistakes. These unsubs are monsters, but underneath they are pathetic, tragic souls, frightened, terrified about what they've become, promising themselves that this time will be the last time, only to realize that it's an urge they can't control. I'm just as scared as you are, Anne. We are getting scarred badly. All of us. If you ever want to pull the pin, I'll understand. Because there will come a time for all of us when the price is higher than the prize. Thanks, Wes. You want to read this? Go ahead. OK. Pulling everything we have to date from everybody, I got this guy as follows. Maybe 30 or 32. I thought you had him younger. Yeah, but after seeing the scene, I changed directions. It's organized, but out of whack somehow. If you move the furniture, then it's more calculated. If we're dealing with surrogate killings of his mother, then it makes him older still. I'm using an inverse ratio of age to victim. If these poor girls are mother surrogates. He could be as old as 35. What else? Blonde hair, probably medium size, not social, keeps to himself, unmarried, maybe lives with his mother, an older female member of his family. But has above average IQ. He might drive a bright colored sports car, goes with repressed types. Likely has no female friends. They scare him. He may be frightened of big breasted women. He attacks women with small breasts because he feels safer. It's kind of sketchy, but it's a start.
He's out there, that murderous bastard. I can smell him. And I'm gonna get him. Before next Friday night. calls me an hour ago. She's crying. She says that scrawny marmalade cat of hers is missing. She says it didn't come home last night. All night. Looked and looked all night. Just like, like that, she says. Crying all the time, Joe. I didn't do nothing to that cat. That was before the hospital. I got my business now and all the repair work. I don't have time to be sitting fine nobody's cat. What you looking at? I left your food in the bedroom. Arlene made it special. That Arlene is a slut. Yes, Mama. Yes, Mama. Oh, I was showing like the, the bath. Waiting, waiting all the time. Waiting like I could help it. Go away. Go away. Go away. Look, I was I wasn't doing anything. She made me. She made me look. I wasn't doing anything. I fear the white bone demon. I promise. I promise. You must please me. You must make her pay. You must make her slut nastiness disappear. Or you will perish in the foul depths of your own spear. brown shoes ready oh. maybe saturday it's we have it's been saturday's fine i could bring them by uh, on saturday maybe. no i uh, really mr kresser i can drop by for them it's no problem Why does he take off his shoes before he kills them? Why the wound in the bottom of the right foot? Why does he cut the feet? Now those are the questions, and we got to come up with some answers. You got uh, the phone caddy, Wes? Yeah, sure. This thing's on K. I said it was on L. I thought it was. Well, it said on K. It opens on L. Why? Maybe the K page is missing. The needle points to the next page, which is an L. So his name was in her dial under K, and he took it out. Alan? All the names in this dial are for businesses. No personal friends, right? That's right. Maybe what she did was to look up the number in the phone book first before putting it in the dial. Why don't you send her phone books back to Norma? Have her check under K's for some prints. It's a good idea. We usually keep their finger on the number while they're dialing. All right, let's go. 
find out how much furniture this guy moved around. Then I want it put back the way it was, and we'll see what we've got, huh? Put this on the plane to Norma. She can scan it and have what you want in an hour. Skipper, can I talk you outside for a minute? Yeah, what is it? Look, Skipper, I know that the cops have interrogated all the people over there across the street, you know, and they, they, they saw nothing, right? This is a great place where hypnosis could come in real handy. How's that? Well, okay, let's say one of them old geezers, okay, he looks out the window, he sees maybe a parked car or a guy walking a dog or something, and it doesn't register, right? So I come in, and I put him under with this new skill that I got, and I can extract from said geezer certain pertinent information which is not currently in our investigative domain, so to speak. I don't know, Jenny. What if something goes wrong, goes wrong, goes wrong? No, no, Wes. What the hell can go wrong? You saw the certificate I got? You ain't gonna believe it. You're deeper, your head is heavy, and you're completely asleep. She's out. That's amazing, Jenny. Yeah. You actually got her under. Uh-huh. I'll ask her. All right, Mrs. Gleason, I'm going to take you back. Back to last Friday night. It's early in the evening. You're in your house. Do you see anything, Mrs. Gleason? I'm watching Wheel of Fortune. I uh, get up and let the cat out. When you look out, do you see anything unusual? A person maybe standing across the street? No. There's nobody there. Is there a car or anything? Parked in the street. There's a car parked just a little ways down from her house. Where exactly? There. Right there. Uh, do you remember the make of the car, the color? The sports car. Like Alex had, only red. Well, Alex, her son, uh, had an MG. Uh, Mr. Gleason, do you remember the year of the car? 75? 76. A red 76? M.G. was parked down the street from Lydia's house on Friday night? Yes. Jimmy, this is great. Can you get her to put her hand down? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Gleason, you, you want to lower your hand, please? What's wrong? Why didn't she put her hand down? Uh, Mrs. Gleason, I'm going to count to three, and then I'm going to snap my fingers, and you're going to come out of it. Uh, you'll feel good, your hand will be at your side. You'll feel relaxed, you'll feel happy, and your hand will be at your side. One, two, three. I, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, so, something. Oh, it's never happened before. Okay. All right, Mr. Gleason. One, two, three. What did you do to my wife? Oh boy, uh, Mr. Gleason. Uh, Jim, get Mrs. Gleason. This has never happened before. What did you do? Okay, okay. What's happening? Something's wrong. Honest, Wes. Someone on the car radio. Have okay. you meet you at the hospital to get her out of uh, No, no. I, this has never happened. I swear to God, this has never happened before. Go wrong, go wrong, go wrong, go wrong. Since Norma sent us back this phone book, let's see if it has a memory. Sometimes you leave a phone book open long enough, and it flops open to where it was. Mechanics under K. Trail Auto Service, Triple K Towing. Solved a homicide once in Brooklyn with this old dick trick. Maybe you get nothing, but you just keep trying. Shoe repair under K. Let's see, Cresser Shoe Repair. Ken Shoes and Repair. Her red MG's 56 to 80, registered to people whose last names start with K, there it is. There's gotta be 30 to 40 names here. Yeah, who's from the Tri-County area? Rusty, it's Friday night. We don't have enough time to check all these. Why don't we narrow it down to our profile? 32-year-olds with blonde hair. Geez, that'll tie up the computer statewide. Let's run a check on the men. No women.
All right, Jimmy, what do you have for us? Wes wants you guys to scope out these shoes while we wait. Then we got to catch a plane back in an hour. Now, what thinks that these shoes might be different from the others? Because they're worn on the outside, not on the inside, like the others in the closet. So he thinks these shoes might belong to somebody else. We brought your control sample for comparison. You didn't forget. <gasps> I'm kidding. Don't worry. I got it. I've got something here. I've been working on the hair. Ready. Olefin sulfate, chamomile, aloe vera gel, propyl betaine, anoxidil, and keratin amino protein. Hair grower. Call Wes and tell him we're not looking for a blonde. This guy's balding. He's using some kind of hair growing formula. Our boy is balding. He's using hair grower. Got it. Okay, bring it back here, please. Okay, over to the right a little bit. Right, front leg, right, there. Bingo. Now it makes sense. He kills them when they're sitting. The shoes are a part of a ritual, maybe a gift, or maybe he thinks symbolically that he's killing somebody else, and he leaves the shoes behind, same size feet. The shoes are important. Shoes there. Well, you got something? Here it is. Kennedy Shoe Center. Ken Shoe Repair. Cresser Shoe Cresser, Repair. Cresser. 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 Cresser, Cresser, Cresser. Alma Cresser, 1616 West Cyprus. West Grace and Justice Department. Patch me through to Sheriff Miller, will you? Right on Field Street, down two blocks to Madison Drive. Cypress Road is on the first left. This is Miller. How you doing, guys? I think we got something. Shoemaker, name of Cresser, 1618 Cypress Road. Give me a warrant and get it quick. We're on our way in now. Come in quiet. Right. All right, Ned. Ned, you and Tony take the house, secure the exits. Jimmy, come with me here and stay on the radio. We can't Let's go in until Miller has a warrant. Jimmy, give me your shoes. Sure. I'm going to be a customer. You have it? Yeah, go. Oh, he's got it. Go on. All right, Skipper. Get him my shoes back. He's couching against the window. Armchair to the left. He arranged the furniture that looked like this room. That's not all he does. Get a look at this. Nada? We missed him. He's gone. Found these inside his closet. They're all the same size. Six, trip away. And there's a surprise on the inside of the right shoe. Be careful. I bet the blood in there matches the victims. Well, that explains the wound in the bottom of the foot. But why? Extreme pain paralyzes the victim for a few seconds. She tries the shoe on, she screams, drops her head, grabs her foot, and in that second, he stabs her. That's why there's never any struggle. It's Friday night, guys. This could be happening again while we're standing around looking at each other. The idea window is open. Let's hear him if you got him. Mr. Cresser. I said I'd pick them up. I was in the neighborhood. I thought I'd drop them by. Can I have a glass of water? Oh, okay. Come on in. Oh. 
All the dead women had six AAA feet. How do you do with that index, Sam? Only one. Nancy Press, 1235 Londonberry Road. It's two miles from here. You want me to try them on? happening again because damn it joe i can't put up with it anymore he makes me mama he comes into my room and he makes me he made you what do them he made me do them do what what the hell are you talking about kill them mama i had to kill those girls this is just like in the hospital isn't it just like when you was killing cats and dogs what am i supposed to be now the mother of a murderer is that what i'm supposed to be go to court while they convict you of murdering women why? Why do you do this to me? Mama. Mama, please. If you had a shred of decency, you would take care of this yourself and not put me through this. Mama. You know what they'll do to you in prison? Do you know the nasty, perverted things they'll do? If you care for me, Joe, if you really care, you won't put me through this. Honest to God, you'll do the right thing. Mama. Police, where'd they go? I don't know. She dragged them down the hall. Come on. They'll do nasty things. A good son would do the right thing. Where the hell are they? A good son would make his mama go through this. Down here. Open this door. Open the door. Take it in, Tony. He was crying, and then all of a sudden he just jumped. I don't know. Go figure it. How's it going? I'm almost finished. I've added him to our serial killer database. Got most of Kresser's records from the mental hospital in Kansas where he was committed. I don't know, Wes. His mother tortured him. A boyfriend of hers broke his legs when he was six, never allowed them to be set. It was a punishment for walking in on them during sex. Alma Kresser destroyed him before he was ten. I'm meeting Alan and Norma. They're going to show me a brochure on some new laser doohickey. You want to join us? The paper says Joe Kresser is getting a county burial today. Mama refused to pay, so he's being put in a pauper's grave. Well, give it a rest, Ann. 
Nancy Press is back in the classroom teaching children. It's not perfect, is it? But we move on. Come on. We'll pick up Jimmy on the way. No, I can't help but think we caught the wrong member of the family. I wonder whatever happened to little Joseph Kressler. I wonder what he might have been. <laughs> 